And here we go, another edition of Extra Time. We have to start with the shocking news that uh, Celtic's bid for Champions League glory will have to wait another year, Craig. Uh, Craig was crying earlier. Well, I don't think the bid for glory is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the bid, the bid uh, to uh, play in it. I mean, it, look, I know having played there and how important it is to the supporters in the club. As it is for all clubs, but particularly a big support, 60,000 mm. and... I didn't see the game. I can only I can only imagine from past experience how much stick. The yes. And the Did margin. you ever experience any of that stick? How? <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, some highs and some lows. <laughs> how unpleasant <laughs> that must be <laughs> for the current Celtic players. I'm well, sure. it's tough, and it's a, they're a tough yeah. crowd to play in front of. And when, yeah. when you're good, they'll they'll you know support you. And when you're bad, and I'm trying to get my mic because I've dropped it. <laughs> and when you're bad. They, uh, they let you know, yeah. They'll let you know. They're, they're, they're not shy they're, about it. They've got the delights of Europa League, right? They'll let you right. know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Still, I still, can win that. I'll yeah. win that. Or yeah. we forgive them. It's one of the pressures of playing for up in Glasgow is the crowd and the pressures of uh, a failure. Yeah. Uh, you know, some people just buckle. Uh, Sid Lowe is with us. Uh, Sid, I uh, want to hear about your Western Odyssey. But first of all, Porto, another big name crashing out of the Champions League third qualifying round. What do you make of that? Yeah, so there's the two finalists from the final in Seville many years ago, which yes. I still remember as being the... I mean, Craig's talking about the fans, and, and sorry to kind of go off on a tangent, but it's a, it's a relatively good one, I hope. Um, the, the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen. I and mean, it was genuinely, we're talking 80,000, 90,000 Celtic fans in Seville, which is a big city, but not really big enough for that many Scots. Um, you know, it was <laughs> boiling hot, 45 degrees. The, the, the place looked like a war zone. There were literally people just lying in the street, unable to move through, <laughs> through heat and drink. And, and, and you know, we, I remember going into a bar on the way to the stadium and asking for a drink and them saying that the only thing they had left was coffee because Ooh. literally every <laughs> single cold thing they had had been sold. Wow. Um, and it was just an extraordinary experience. And it's worth pointing this out in, in, in fairness to Celtic, they got absolutely robbed by yeah. that Porto team. Yeah, and that was, that was the win that started Jose Mourinho's managerial run. Yeah, I was at the 2003. Game. I was there. Yeah. I, w I was working for BBC Radio, and so I was there, and Sid's right. He couldn't move. I mean, I flew out from uh, East Midlands Airport to, to Seville, and I stupidly thought I'd walk into East Midlands Airport and, like, it'll just be normal. <laughs> and I, I got in there, and there was just... Celtic bodies lying <laughs> across. There was apparently, and this is true, there wasn't an airport in the United Kingdom that wasn't because not the, they couldn't all get on the flights coming out of Glasgow. Uh. So they were splintered <laughs> around the whole of the. There wasn't a, not an airport you could go right. in the UK that they weren't in finding a way to Seville. Wow. It was incredible. God, that imagine, was incredible. Uh, imagine if they ever made a Champions League final. What, what would that seem to be I, like? I mean, the, the Scottish fans. Uh, uh, Incredible fans. Right. I mean, like Craig says, when they get behind, you, they get behind. You. But when they go against you, they're by the way, right, they were very well behaved as well. Got, got some questions to get through. Got to start with oh. you, Paul. Actually, this is, you're answering your own question. Paul Mariner's bugle is back. Uh, how, how, right now? <laughs> how, how would you guys rate the Premier League's use of VAR in the first uh, oh. weekend? <laughs> well, ask look, the bugle. Look, um, the, the Sterling incident. Yeah. I mean, uh, look. Yes, he was offside. I'll never get over it, though. I mean, I mean, the armpit. Wait, but he's offside. <laughs> I know he's offside. Like a clear but, armpit. But his armpit, though, Craig. Come on, mate. Sterling's armpit is pretty prolific. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Ian Dark was on yesterday, and we had to get him in a straight jacket because he's <laughs> apoplectic about VR. Yeah. I, there are naysayers and then there are people who don't. I don't mind it, right at all. I think it's a step forward. And as, as I said yesterday on the show, there are way more problematic things in the game than VR, mm -hmm. like. You know, like the dominance of the big clubs and, and their relative leagues. Yeah. That's a way more problem. For the elite clubs are just dominating. You know, PSG, Bayern, you know, Liverpool, City, uh, Juventus. Yeah. However, I've never known so many people to be upset with decisions that are correct. Yeah. <laughs> you know, That's I get, true. I get That's... the subjective ones, but I've never known so many people to get upset. Well, I know the decision was correct, <laughs> but it was tight. <laughs> but it was too close. It was too close. Yeah, was, too close. Yeah, was, that that was. is the amazing thing. Sid, yep. uh, Sid, what did you make of uh, this first weekend of uh, looking from afar uh, on the Premier League? Well... I mean, in a way, uh, and, and at, the, at the very large risk of sounding like a smarty pants here, 
I, I, I quite enjoyed it because I was really just watching what we've been going through for a year in Spain. And so this is a process that all of these discussions uh, were kind of had before, we've seen before. And, and, and to give you a Spanish view on it, or at least an Englishman in Spain's view of it, at the start of the season, it seemed to be going very well in Spain. And as the season went on, I genuinely got to the point where I started thinking, you know what, even justice isn't, uh, isn't, isn't enough of a reward to have to put up with this. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the best thing about that, the, the Sterling incident, when he was offside, was the reaction when the goal was chalked off by the West Ham fans. Yeah. It was priceless. Astonished. It, yeah. They were laughing. And it was, it was yeah. amazing. Uh, moving on, Michael, uh, I, I think I know what the answer is, is going to be. Uh, have any of your former managers, all of you former players, got in a yelling match with the opponent's manager? I'd be very surprised if... If is you were able to say player? any of your any of your any former your ma any managers. The managers you ever had as a player stood on the sideline and gone in a yelling no. match with an opposing manager. Oh, yeah. No, I've not. Really? Well, not you. You're a manager. Mm -hmm. Have I got in a shouting match with the opposition manager? No, one of your managers. Yeah, one of getting as, a shouting as a player, match. Did Bobby Robson ever stand there managers. and get in a yelling match with? Yes, yeah. Alan Ball. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that happens. I, I think managers yeah. have exchanges on the sidelines all the time. Yeah. I don't think there's anything uh, unique about that. Yeah, that's what I thought would be surprising. You never did it. I, had, I, I know that's not the question, but I had to run in with some Premier opposing managers. <laughs> yeah. Graham Taylor, God rest his soul, is not with us now. He, he, was, he was going tomato red one day at me at Vickery's Road. <laughs> what had you done to uh, I may provoke have, that out of I may have uh, trodden on a couple of his players <laughs> in the due course of a match. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Graham was shouting, Butler! Butler! And he was, I was like winding him up. <laughs> and he was going red, but I saw him years later. He was absolutely lovely, lovely mm -mm. gentleman. And I actually, this is a strange one. I actually was, I actually one day had an argument with the manager of the Brunei national team. <laughs> As strange as that sounds. What was that? That does sound very strange. <laughs> an end of season it? tour that we went on with Chelsea, yeah. and there was an English gentleman managing them, and probably oh, okay. very well. I don't know who he was. And I also got in an argument with him. <laughs> no idea. You seem to get in a lot of arguments, <laughs> Craig. <laughs> well, on that mm. subject, uh, picking up on a question from yesterday, uh, yesterday's FC Extra Time, Stevie didn't think mm. that Craig would be a good manager. And Cardi wants to know uh, what, what, what the rest of the panel agree on that. Well, 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 I'll see the well, he, said I, he said I was a 90-10 guy. He, yeah. did, he did say so there was a So there was enough give, give and take. Yeah. In, in, well, I've got to manage him department. every day. That's true. <laughs> you, know. you, managed to get, <laughs> <laughs> you managed to get him on the golf course as well. well I've got to manage him. Well, I mean, enough said laughing, but I have to manage him. He, this is a man <laughs> who can't <laughs> sign on to the golf club to book a tea time. It's a man who can't even get ESPN Plus, a streaming service, on his phone, but it's on his phone. <laughs> it's a man who we went to golf in Massachusetts, and all he had to do was get in the car, and, and he left his phone, and he left his wallet. And then halfway oh, up, he said... His wallet, I think I've, I think I've... Uh, ho hopefully I've got my golf clubs. <laughs> So we're talking about see, managing, I have to manage him. When, when I talk to him about you on the golf course, you're the nicest bloke on the golf course. With all the all the members, you're a lovely mm. fella. Yeah. Yes. No, but so why, why is he pummeling you about the 90-10 then? Well, he's not pummeling me. Just so <laughs> does he have the qualities, the, the, the man management well, skills? Well, to, to, to that point, golfing Craig and Studio Craig are two different Craigs no, all right. together. Well, okay, so all what, together. About, what about coaching Craig? So what about well, coaching yeah. which, which one, which Craig is showing up? <laughs> is it golf? Oh, you can't. You, you get well, both. Well, you sometimes, both. I think what, sometimes you need both. I think what Stevie was trying to say was because we, we've all been in training grounds for years and we've worked under some big managers, different characters. I think mm -hmm. what he was trying to say that I maybe have a short fuse with some of the players. Mm -hmm. But you, I've not managed and coached because I've never wanted to do it. But you, Paul knows this. Having managed, you have to change to some extent. Yeah, you do. So, you've got to bite, I, your, I, I, <laughs> bite your lip a lot. Yeah. Yes. And I'm great at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, especially, especially studio Craig. <laughs> Should be an issue, Sid. Should be an issue. Uh, <laughs> Should be an issue. No problem. Uh, I, mean, I mean, the thing is, he doesn't, he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't fancy it. 90 so, 10 guy. I was, he said, I'm a 90 10 guy, Stevie says. I'm just 90 10, 90, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. You have to pick your battles. Don't you you agree with him? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. All right. Yeah, no, one more. Food. Oh, okay. Food. We can never escape. Oh, all right, we have to have a food. And, and indeed, uh, guys, what is your favourite Indian food? 
Indian have we, have food. we been through every uh, my variety of my food? My favourite Indian, Indian food, well, is a, is a, and a, we struggle around here to get quality that we, we get. In. We do, yeah. I've got to say. And uh, a good spicy chicken madras would yeah. be my yeah. favourite. Let me just say, Indian food in Trinidad and Tobago is different from Indian food anywhere else. Right. Right, so I'm assuming I'm... Indian food in Trinidad and Tobago is... Yeah. Right, my favourite. Here, outside of Trinidad and Tobago, I'll go for lamb Rogan Josh. Ooh, oh, nice. It's yeah. my go-to. Yeah. I was going to go lamb too, lamb korma, but... Although Korma? Any, you, you, you I, like like the, I like the mild, the, the, the yeah. creamy, yeah, yeah. The creamy good. one? Good. You might as well. We're good, I'll tell you what, man. you might as well just get a strawberry yogurt and put it on top. Lamb strawberry yogurt. Lamb strawberry yogurt is for Asia, just a, please. Just get a yogurt and put it on top. <laughs> What's about bloody mild curries? Uh, Sid, are you a curry yeah, official? I just Anna? knew. Uh, I just knew that the minute you said korma, they were going to be on to you. There was no way you were getting away with that. Oh, <laughs> not yeah. in a million years. Which is why I was going to say madras, even though it's not true. Because at this point, <laughs> this is what happens in Britain, that the curry is a measure of, of, of strength somehow. Yeah, right. So you've got yeah. to go for the big one. No, the truth, it sort of depends. But I, I, I would normally go somewhere between... Uh, 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 a chicken ticker without the sauce, so just a chicken ticker, or, or, or a really good jalfrezi. Yeah, mm. And yeah. lime pickle. You, Lots yeah, of lime you believe pickle. that? I don't believe, Chris, I don't believe Sid one minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I eat the jalfrezi. <laughs> just jalfrezi for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. With a side of coma. <laughs> Strawberry yogurt. In Bolton, the, the, the mecca for Indian food yeah. is. Uh, Chicken tikka masala. Mm. Yep, yep. Big fan. And what the, what the lads do, the old they say, oh, fire it up, do you want it? Yeah. Which is, I, I like that aspect of it, because right. they can fire it up or they can just keep it. We, we can't let you go, Sid, without exploring a little bit of uh, your recently concluded Do you know what Stevie's favourite? Hey, oh. Do you know what Stevie's favourite? Do you know what Stevie's God. Stevie's favorite, uh, well, he doesn't like Indian, does he? He claims not. To. Well, he, he likes to go in. When he goes in, he goes for the, the traditional gammon steak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and with a packet of crisps. Yes. <laughs> a a packet of crisps and an egg on it. <laughs> Sid uh, is a, he's a gourmet. He is a gourmet. Eater. I'm desperate he, he, to get he, the conversation of Sid's, <laughs> Sid's journey. Uh, how the West was won. You just you just did like 2,500 miles around the Western US. Uh, tell us yeah. about it. What? what? It was. was <laughs> it was a. It, it was a lot of fun, yeah. Got in, got in a lot of national parks. Got in, uh, got in quite a lot of hamburgers. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which is which you see that the best. <laughs> probably, probably, probably my favourite bit was. Uh, Vegas. Probably my favourite bit was being in the sea with the sea lions on Monterey Bay. Ooh, all right. That was I'm quite not doing good. That. Nice. Getting sea with Monterey Bay. Yeah, I remember I passed there like a few years ago. Yeah, that's driving down the you Big Sur, isn't it? Yeah. Best yeah. food, best food you had on the entire trip, Sid. A lot of burgers, but oh, uh, that was probably in Monterey as well. Yeah, seafood in Monterey. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Camper Vanna. Yeah, sea lion. Camper Van. The, the low family. <laughs> low family. Sid, was the dog there? Was the dog there? <laughs> no, 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 no. Dog was the dog was back in Madrid being looked after. Mm. Uh, Although I did notice uh, there, was a, there was a brilliant article today in the paper, right? And this is a bit of a side one, but it comes with a dog. When I, I was, I was on, going into a shop in somewhere on Route 66, it might have been Williams, it might have been Flagstaff, I can't remember, but there was a sign on the door saying, please do not come in here pretending your dog is a service dog. And I thought, come on, people don't seriously do that. That was my first thought. And then my second thought was, actually, that's a great idea. I can get <laughs> Stella everywhere. All I need to do is pretend she's a service dog. Yeah. Right? And then for some reason today, about a week later, I read an article about this today in one of the, one of the papers. Apparently this is a genuine problem, yeah. and yeah. in particular in the US. People genuinely pretend their dogs are there to help them out. And there was this brilliant story that talked about how there's been problems on flights with... Um, with <laughs> Service dogs. And I promise you I'm not making this is, <laughs> this up. Assistant peacocks. Peacock have, pe people have emotional assistant peacocks. Hey? I mean, it would cheer you up, in fairness. It, it, it? Would, it definitely put a smile on your face. That's for sure. None of you sat next to it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what if you sat Emotional next? peacocks. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> All right. Since, since uh, Home Improvement Empire is uh, waiting to be uh, tended to, uh, he, he saw lots of those on his, on his uh, travels. Uh, we will be back, ESPN FC, uh, tomorrow. We'll have a Super Cup final to, uh, to review for you.
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.